tyre. Welcome back to the channel. So here we have a lump of wood with some nails in it. And well, this video is not going to be like the sort of normal videos where I try and fix something or make something worse. Um, it's going to be to try and explain the difference between torque and power. It's going to be a bit like engineering explain, but without the whiteboard, the maths, all the intelligence. Um, but as you can see, we have a lump of wood and it has got two nails in it and we have two hammers and hopefully this will be a visual representation of the basics of torque versus power so I'll, I'll try and explain best I can I'm probably going to make a right vocal up of it but let's try and we'll start by demonstrating sort of like the power versus torque with the hammer so how hard the hammer hits the nail that is torque how fast it hits it that is your RPM how fast it hits it in relation to how hard it hits it, that is power and the, the effect of that is how fast the nail goes into the wood. So power is how, how long that takes to go in there. The faster it goes in, the more power you're putting into it. So we've got power. Yes, yes. And then we have torque. Now if they pretend that they did, they didn't, but pretend that they did it. If they took the same amount of time to go into the wood, then you've got the same power on each nail. And it's made by higher RPM, hitting it not as hard, but with higher RPM on, on this one with the power and hitting it less frequently, but harder. That is what torque is. So then you get into a few other things where you've got power versus torque and on a dyno where you've got usable power and what have you and, and one versus the other Can we just talk, and so this is a very crudely drawn bunch of dyno graphs of different types of engines so this one's very linear where you've got pretty much a flat torque curve all the way up this one is like on say a sports bike where you've got nothing 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 and then it comes into life and gives you everything and loads of power but not all that much of it's obviously usable. That's an electric motor. And this one's a diesel, where well, you've got your torque is in the middle of say, low RPM and then it tapers off. I mean, obviously these are pretty, well, nice and crude. But then you've got the benefits of more torque over power. And I'll, I'll explain something here where, if you've got more power, it's always gonna be more power. But then you've got the area under the graph. So you've got more area there than you have there, for instance. So you've got more usable power and then gearing comes into it. So say all these are producing the same power. Say they're all 200 horsepower at the peak. So 200 horsepower, 200 horsepower, 200 horsepower, 200 horsepower. And um, you've got your usable power. Now this is why motors are so efficient because you have a lot of usable under the graph because the torque curve is so linear. But going back to more interesting things like internal combustion if we look at the diesel your your power your torque is spiking and your power is at lower revs now what this means is that usually diesels have a shorter powered like power band on the revs but because it's more torque you can say double the gearing to make the output faster at them so say that is engines twice as fast as that one might well, be more than that but say it's twice as fast as that one and it's producing the same power on the diesel you can then double the gearing because you've got double the torque so that then the output at the wheels is going the same speed as this at the same power but because you're doubling the gearing you're longer in the gearing you're then longer in this you're longer in this as well you're extending your power curve over a greater range because your gearing is doing that so the only way that this is going to be really usable is if it's something like where you can fight through where there's no power, at, like on a sports bike, for instance, you don't need the power at low speed because it don't weigh anything. And then once you get up to the speed where the wind resistance starts playing a part, that's when you need the power. So you can live with that. But if you're using this in a car, so you've got your 200 horsepower, not a lot of torque, and it's in a heavy car, you need a million gears because your power band is short. The area where the power is is very short and you need to keep it in that to make use of it 
Uh, I, I don't know if I'm explaining this that well. I mean, this isn't really the type of video I usually do, is anyone who's watched these videos before has probably realized, but it's something that I've tried to explain a few times on Facebook and comments and stuff. And I thought it'd be easy to make a video out of it. And then when someone's asking the question or someone's debating about it, then I can just post the video. So that's what this is. And one of the things commonly mentioned on Facebook is that say one car will be faster than another, even though it's got less power because it's got more torque. Now that isn't strictly true because if you have more power, the work is done faster. It gets the car from here to be faster. This is a diesel. This has got probably quite a lot of torque. It's got a decent amount of power. It goes all right for an old diesel, um, but it's the power that matters for the speed of it. Now torque, like I said, you've got the benefits of torque as in if you've got more torque at the, where the power is, then you can lengthen that gear ratio and you can widen the torque curve by gearing. If you want torque out of something with power but not a lot of torque, you have to gear it right down. You can It works both ways. You can turn power into torque and torque into power, but ultimately you'll always have the same amount of power and the work will be done the same time. But the benefit you have if you have something with more torque, like a diesel, is like I say, you can effectively have more usable power. And also the fuel quicker because of the power delivery, because with the torque, the way that it's delivered, when you've got it low down and it gives you a kick up the arse and then tapers off, it feels faster than the other way around. Um, so there is that side of it as well. And as I said, this isn't usually the type of video that I make. I usually make videos messing about with shit like this, cars that aren't worth fixing. Um, as you can see, this is the C1 in the shitter position and I've done videos in the past trying to make a bit more power out of it without too much effort. Um, now, this is a naturally aspirated petrol. The hardest engines to get more power out of them as a rule because the only way you can make more power is you increase the torque or you increase the revs and if you've got a turbo it's easy to increase torque you up the turbo and you can just put more boost in and force it in and you get a bigger bang and more torque um, like i said with a naturally aspirated if you want to increase revs then yeah you could you could map it so it revs higher but the cam duration and everything when you start getting into all that it's not going to be happy delivering power at high RPM and I mean the flywheel on these is is way heavier than what you'd expect in a little one litre engine anyway. Uh, you know, then you've got all that to contend with. I mean these are actually an under square engine which is something else to go into. I mean I'm, I'm not going to go too far into it but under square engine means that the stroke is bigger than the bore. Now if you look at say like go back to the sports bike it'll be an over square engine where the pistons are moving up and down a little bit very fast. Big pistons moving up and down a little bit gives you low cc's but a bigger piston and um then you get into other problems with that if you have have it doing that because you need longer com rods otherwise it tries to scrape the side of the, the barrel and stuff like that it puts more force on the i'm going off topic it puts more force on the cylinder balls if you if you've got a, an over square engine like that if you don't have long com rods uh, but anyway yeah hopefully i'll be back on making some shit video on this soon or some other car and then back to what i usually do um like i said not what i usually do but i thought it was easier to make a video out of it than keep typing on facebook to people to try and explain this shit as badly as i've explained it in this video uh, anyway that's all for this one don't forget to like comment subscribe all the usual shit and i'll see you next time